welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good Monday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 11th of August. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your latest forecast information by listening to your NOAA weather radio or logging on online to weather.gov slash Alaska or arh.noaa.gov. The weather info line is always open at 800-472-0391. You can find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube in between the shows of Alaska Weather. And of course, in the afternoon, you'll get your daily afternoon map briefing. You can find that simply by going to NWS Anchorage or NWS Fairbanks and watching that about two and a half uh, minute uh, broadcast there where they do online. And it works really well if you just need a quick peek at what's going on around all of Alaska. It's a nice broad brush uh, view of uh, what you can expect for the next 24, 48, and 60 hours out before you get into Alaska weather, of course, in the evening hours. Here's what's coming our way uh, for the Alaska weather headlines. Uh, unsettled Bering Sea and Gulf of Alaska pattern continues there. Uh, as we look out to the west, we can see one uh, storm developing across the western Gulf as a stronger storm is uh, working to take its place. We'll see that play out here in the surface charts here in just a few minutes. Gales are expected in the northern Gulf by Tuesday night and uh, many other places, in fact most other places along the coast, are uh, experiencing some type of small craft advisory. Thunderstorms are also expected to continue in the interior and the west for the next several days. And you can find, well, that's interesting. That's empty, by the way, in case you missed it. Um, you'll find more information there online with those charts uh, anytime by going to our website at weather.gov slash Alaska and then looking on the left-hand side of your screen. That says uh, TV desk there. Now, back to the fun. Fire danger. We expect uh, high fire conditions in mainly isolated areas across some areas in the west, uh, mostly though in the interior and central and eastern sections of the uh, Alaska range. You'll find at least some elevated to high levels of fire danger where the rain is kind of missing those spots. Now, you don't see that coming right through the Tanano Valley. Uh, many areas there were experiencing pretty wet conditions uh, not too far away from uh, today. So just last week, uh, again, a nice a wedge of rain working through that region. But there have been some places that have not seen that wealth of rainfall just in the last couple weeks. So that higher fire danger is growing just a little bit more. Now, as we look at the Bering Sea, you'll notice that low pressure circulation west of Unalaska and east of Shemya. This zone of low pressure here is working to overtake another area of low pressure that's uh, a little bit closer to Kodiak Island. As this continues to move to the north and east, this storm will grow a little bit more and eventually work itself eastward, dragging in cooler and drier air across the Bering while sending warmer, wetter air up the west coast. So plan on rain and unsettled conditions across the yukon Kuskokwim Delta into Norton Sound and maybe even into the Seward Peninsula with the bulk of the precipitation and wetter weather well to our south across the western Gulf and North Pacific. As we look out to the west, we're also uh, keeping an eyeball out for uh, other circulations that could be developing, especially those of tropical nature, and we don't see any making that curve just yet, but uh, surely in the next couple months, as more and more of those uh, tropical cyclones develop a little bit across the Pacific, we'll have a better connection to that, but at the moment, we're a-okay. Looking at the visible satellite picture across Alaska and southeastern Alaska, some uh, waves of rain mainly along coastal areas in north today. You can see the sun breaking out across the central and southern parts of southeast. A little bit of a dry slot here that's working its way toward Prince William Sound and then back to the west we reconnect to another frontal boundary stretching from areas just east of Kodiak and Chiniak Bay all the way southward. Out to the west toward Sand Point and Unalaska, a pretty healthy dose of Pacific moisture, and that is all being fed into low pressure across the southern Bering. Across the interior, a hodgepodge of clouds there, but a lot of what you are seeing is that convective development with the daytime heating. There has been a wealth of thunderstorms, especially around the Denali area. Quite a few lightning strikes there just in the last 
uh, say three to four hours there. A lot of development, some of that also spreading out across uh, areas into the lower Yukon Valley and north of Bethel. Northward, much drier conditions north of the Yukon Valley and into the Seward Peninsula. We were looking at some areas of fog. You can see that very smooth and kind of uh, blurred area right here, uh, just north and west of uh, the Chukchi Sea Coast. This is a, a wealth of fog right there across the northern parts of the Siberian continent. So uh, quite a bit of different weather from north to south, as you would expect, of course, in our Alaska. Here's today's weather map then, as we saw it by about 3, 30, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Scattered showers and thunderstorms generally from Denali and westward of the Parks Highway, all the way out toward the yukon Kuskokwim Delta. Uh, some areas of light to moderate rain across Bristol Bay and then westward. That broke up a little bit more, but a lot of cloud development there uh, heading into that zone of low pressure at 983 millibars. An occluded front to the north and west and the triple point where it all comes together right along the southern tip of the Alaska Peninsula. That's moving north and east. And then heading into southeastern Alaska, the reason you've got a little bit of drier air is because low pressure is moving that northward east of a frontal boundary. That's across the eastern and northern Gulf. Some areas of fog and rain. Uh, just off of Middleton Island and into Prince William Sound. And then right there around the Barrens, 999 millibar low. That's starting to work its way northward. That is going to quickly uh, shift around into the eastern Gulf as we get into tonight. Pockets of rainfall across the northern Gulf. Some of that a little bit heavier perhaps across the northern sections of southeast than anything you'll find in southeastern parts of the panhandle. There are things really considerably drier heading toward the Dixon entrance. Look for areas of light rain all the way around the Gulf into Kodiak where that Triple point is still working its way slowly north and east. Watch for some pockets of heavier wind there. The only gale warning we expect at this time, though, doesn't start until Tuesday night, and that will be outside of Prince William Sound in the northern sections of the Gulf. Along the Yukon Valley, showers are expected there, and of course there's going to be a few thunderstorms that are uh, still hanging on into the evening hours there across the central and western sections of the interior. Low pressure across the southern bearing at 984 millibars, starting to show some signs of moving eastward by tomorrow. High pressure sitting across the eastern Gulf will try and hold that at bay. It's not going to do such a hot job, but in the meantime, it will allow southeast to break into a little bit of uh, sunshine, at least for a time, but it's also strengthening that southern flow that's working back into Prince William Sound, South Central and the Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, and even some parts of southwestern Alaska. So plan on some unsettled conditions going into Tuesday. A few isolated uh, showers or storms across the interior, across the lower Yukon, and even across the Seward Peninsula as we head into Tuesday as that moisture and unstable atmosphere is trapped across the southern two-thirds of the interior. Across the north, though, a little bit more sunshine for you for Barrow, Atkasuk, out toward Dead Horse, Prudhoe Bay, Kaktovik, all looking at a little bit more sunshine. However, there's going to be fog right there along the coastline, so you may have to go inland a little bit more to find a better chance of that sun. Look for some light rainfall across the central and eastern chain. Showers across the bearing with that northerly flow weakening a little bit as it gets into Wednesday. And we're back into showers and thunderstorms across the interior, the Alaska Range, the YK, into uh, even Kotzebue Sound by the midweek with showers across the Brooks Range. And our triple point has moved now from the western part of the Gulf into the northern Gulf. Well, this increases the likelihood from Tuesday into Wednesday that we're going to get a little more wind across south central Alaska. And we're probably going to see some heavier rainfall across the central and northern parts of southeast, including places like, oh, uh, probably Juneau up toward Petersburg, and then onward toward Han uh, Haines and Skagway, and even Yakutat, of course, probably right there in the bullseye. Is, it's uh, pretty normal to see that there across the northern Gulf. Now, across the west, again, our northerly winds have subsided by this point a little bit, scattered showers hours still possible, especially as those winds are coming up and over the higher train of the Aleutians. Look for fog in the Pribilovs, of course, and around St. Lawrence and uh, St. Matthew Island waters. And showers will continue across the Seward Peninsula and the yukon Kuskokwim coastline. Uh, Kodiak, you're still looking at some light rainfall uh, as we get into Wednesday. Here's how it looks on temperatures as far as we go through this afternoon. 50s and 60s for a large part of southeast. A few places a little bit uh, farther south around Hyder and uh, closer toward uh, Craig and Cloak. We're pushing that 70 degree mark for a while today. Uh, Hyder, one of the warm spots, obviously. 57 in Kodiak. Upper 60s for Kenai. 64 in Anchorage. Prince William Sound in the mid 50s. Looks like uh, Glen Allen made it up to 66 this afternoon. Talkeetna a little bit better at 68. 66 around Healy. 74 in Fort Greeley. 78 in Fairbanks. A toasty weekend and another toasty day for you today. 72 Fort Yukon. 67 there as we look at uh, 
Eagle and North winds around 73. Further north still around Atkasuk, uh, temperatures there were in the lower 50s with uh, Anaktuvik Pass at 64. Coastal areas along the Arctic in the 40s, uh, Wainwright almost tapped 50 degrees there, 60s and 70s in Kotzebue Sound. Pretty warm stuff there, and uh, it sounds like it's a good day to maybe take a quick dip in the water, but again, that get pretty quick. 65 degrees there out on the western tip of the Seward Peninsula, 73 in Nome, 60s and 70s for Norton Sound, and as you get out toward Nunavak Island, it was 64 degrees there, 70 in Bethel. Bristol Bay temperatures in the lower to mid 60s. Uh, Dillingham was looking at 68 with King Salmon at, uh, I'm sorry, King Dillingham at 63, King Salmon at 68, and 50s and 60s for the Alaska Peninsula with Sand Point around 59. Cold Bay and Falls Pass also in the lower 60s. 64 for Dutch Harbor and Unalaska. The Pribilovs were in the lower 50s. Same goes for Adak, Atka, and Shemya. A little bit warmer today at 56 degrees. Now overnight low temperatures will remain mild along the Yukon Valley from tip to tail all the way out toward Norton Sound, 55 degrees in Nome, uh, 50 as you get up toward Bettles, 53 in Fairbanks, lower 50s for South Central and Kodiak, uh, mid 50s for a good part of southeastern Alaska, Juneau closer to 55. The chain in the Alaska Peninsula also in the 50s and St. Paul staying mild at 53 degrees, 58 in Nunavak Island, maybe 60 there tomorrow. For the west in the interior, upper 60s and lower 70s should be expected. Once again, Nome still holding on to 68, Fairbanks 71. Uh, Kodiak a little bit cooler with the rain moving in 59. Mid 60s for southeast Juneau, you're looking at 66. Uh, Ketchikan and Annette probably upper 60s tomorrow. Mid to upper 50s for the chain. Unalaska and Dutch Harbor closing in on 60 degrees. Probably a better chance of reaching that or exceeding it for the Alaska Peninsula, St. Paul looking at 54 again in the Arctic coast, 30s and 40s, Barrow at 39. So a little bit cooler up north again with that fog sitting right on the coast. Flying weather, well, with fog, we expect IFR conditions there, but you may see some breaks as you head west from Barrow down the Chukchi Sea coast into uh, Kotzebue Sound and maybe even Norton Sound as well. Watch for convective weather uh, south of the Brooks Range and into the interior, probably not far east of uh, Fairbanks at all. Out across the west from Bristol Bay toward the Pribilovs into the central chain, IFR conditions there, and also uh, on the eastern side of the Kenai Peninsula and western Prince William Sound and into Cook Inlet and the eastern side of Kodiak Island. Here's your pass conditions then. VFR for Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass as we go through your Tuesday. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass we expect to see start at NVFR. Lake Clark could go toward IFR by the end of your Tuesday afternoon. Rainy Pass heading for VFR during the day. MVFR expected for Windy Pass and for Isabel Pass. We expect some improvement during your Tuesday. Uh, clouds may lift a little bit there and Mentasta Pass as well heading for VFR. Tanita Pass we expect to see visual flight rule by the day's end and Portage Pass probably IFR on the eastern side with areas along the northern Cook Inlet likely holding at VFR. But again, wind may develop as an issue during the day, so keep that uh, in mind. Chilkoot and White Pass, we expect to see IFR conditions as we go through your Tuesday, probably some improvement during the day. Now, just a couple weeks ago, the freezing levels were really, really tight and really warm out across the west. That whole pattern has changed now with low pressure taking the rains across the bearing. We see those freezing lines dropping to as low as 8,000 feet. Across south central, we've got a pocket of cold air here, and then here's all the warmth that we had. That has now shifted into the western sections of Canada and, of course, across southeastern Alaska and the Gulf. So we've moved back into an unsettled weather position. That means icing is part of our weather picture with light to isolated uh, icing potential across south central, southwest, and across a wide area in the Gulf, mainly above six to 8,000 feet in all the areas we have highlighted there. For right now, southeast does not look to have any icing issues. Uh, the jet stream shows high pressure across northern Siberia. That is drawing in some colder air, but it's shunting it away from Alaska. Instead, we have a very dominant trough of low pressure here across the North Pacific and the central chain. That has uh, 100 to 150 knots of wind supporting it. And again, that's going to keep that active weather moving into the Gulf of Alaska from the Bering Sea. Another wave of low pressure is leaving the Gulf of Alaska, heading for the west coast. That also has some stronger winds there, but the predominant trough right now in the upper atmosphere is the low pressure system you see sitting very close to the central and eastern chain. At 9,000 feet, we have low pressure there, guiding in a strong southerly flow into places like Kodiak and Bristol Bay with 30, 40, even 50 knot winds coming in from the south. Winds pretty light coming in over northern parts of southeast, around 25 knots from the south. And we have easterlies coming across the Arctic coast, about 10 to 50 knots with a northerly flow west of the central chain, about 20 to 30 knots seen there. At 3,000 feet, low pressure sitting right underneath our low. This is a very well-developed and stacked low pressure system, so it's pretty healthy. Uh, southerly flow there working across uh, Bristol Bay and also into Prince William Sound from 10 knots in the east to about 25, maybe even 30 knots in the west. 
Light southeasterly flow coming up the coastline of southeastern Alaska and across the Arctic coast. 15 knot winds also from the east. A stronger flow just north of that though, so if you are flying northward uh, for some sightseeing, you may expect to see some much stronger winds away from the coast. Northerly flow uh, to the west of St. Matthew, uh, about 20 to 25, maybe even 30 knots if you get out across Attu and Kiska there. Turbulence potential is with us with light to isolated moderate, mainly along the Arctic coast and generally below 40,000 uh, 40, feet for sure, but also 4,000 feet. Uh, below 6,000 feet across the Kuskokwim Delta and into the uh, Yukon Delta a little bit further north and also across the southern tip of the Kenai Peninsula outside of Prince William Sound and out toward uh, Lake Iliamna and perhaps around Dillingham and King Salmon at its western extent. We'll see that uh, developing along that frontal boundary crossing the Gulf tomorrow southeast. Once again, don't see any major issues to point out for your area. The Alaska Peninsula by and large should be okay. And then once you get toward Adak, Atka and just about to add to below 6,000 feet, you should start to see some chop developing there. That's a look at your aviation forecast. We'll be back in just a few minutes with the Ice Edge update and your marine weather. Stay tuned. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of Alaska Public Media and Alaska Aviation Safety Foundation, welcome to Hangar Flying. Last time, if you were with us, uh, we had Jess Tubbs on. Jess is a newly minted pilot, having his private for about two months, and he shared with us why he decided to buy an airplane and why he decided to get his private, and that was he lives in Soldotna, but he also works there and Anchorage, and he got tired of the commute. And he, he uh, underwent a very rigorous program, very a lot of self-discipline, studying four or five hours a night to pass the written, and he passed the written with flying colors and passed the, the flying portion with flying, with flying colors, as it was. Anyway, he's back with us. Jess, welcome back. Oh, thank you. I, wanted, I want you to share with our viewers. Here you are now, you, you're living one of your dreams, which was to, to be able to commute back and forth. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked a little bit about proficiency flying when you were getting your license of flying three times a week. How much are you flying now? Uh, I get between two to four hours. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit more, but uh, two to four hours a week, uh, which is, I mean, uh, the more the better. <laughs> well, again, I got to hand it to you that when you start talking about people getting their licenses, something that happens all too often is you get your license and then you start rapidly losing your proficiency. And as you and I talked, uh, I think there's kind of a, a hump at about 250 hours. So if you can fly a couple times a week until you get to that point, uh, it's gonna, you're gonna, you can anticipate probably um, a lot fewer problems maintaining your proficiency. So my hat's off to you. One of the things that really struck me when you and I were talking is you got the airplane, you got your license so you could go back and forth. But the neat thing is you haven't set up a situation where you have to come to Anchorage or you have to get home. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I mean, flying is, uh, you know, in Alaska because of the weather and stuff can be, you know, kind of dangerous. So if you set a time up, you know, a, a specific time, that you always have to be there, you're kind of setting yourself up for, you know, some safety issues because of the weather. So what I did was I just made sure that um, I didn't have to fly it uh, up or I didn't have to fly home. I have a car at each end and uh, I have a place to stay at each end. So if the weather's inclement, I either wait for the next day. Usually that's what I try to do is make sure that my day to fly up and back is going to be good weather and those are the days that I go. So there's a name for that. Uh, one of the names is get home itis. People feel like <laughs> yeah. they've got to get home, yep. and so they throw their personal minimums out the window, or they just they push it. Talking about personal minimums, what what do you use right now for weather minimums? Uh, I, I won't fly if it's uh, less than uh, eight miles visibility, um, and I got to have at least three thousand foot. You know, I I want to take and make sure that I'm that I do make it home because I'm uh, a pretty integral part of our, our sewing machine and vacuum business. So, because uh, I do all the service work for both sure. our Anchorage and Soldotna stores, I gotta make sure I make it home. Well, A, you've got personal minimums, and B, they're, they're clearly VFR, so when you look at the weather charts, you, you know right now that 
well, well above uh, the VFR minimums, and, and, and I, again, I applaud you for that. So I think you told me that, well, before today you had about 116 hours. That was it. So I'm going to ask you a question, and it's the same question I ask people with, with little time and 20,000 hour pilots. Uh, but I, I want to hear the answer, and, and I got to tell you that over the seven years or so that I've been doing this, I've really learned a lot of, of things that made me stop and think. So from your standpoint, what one thing would you like to share with your fellow aviators that would make, what would make flying safer in Alaska if more people did it? Uh, uh, paying more attention to the weather and, uh, and just realizing that you, you don't have to go flying. If it's, you know, if, if you don't feel comfortable, you should not go flying, you know, and if, if you feel the need to, you're, you're pushing it, you're looking for a, a, you know, a problem to happen. Have you ever had to um, turn back? Because the weather wasn't what it was forecast? No, I try to make sure that uh, plenty ahead of time, I know what's gonna happen uh, before I get up there. So before I ever actually get in the plane and start the plane, before actually I get to the airport, um, I've already made sure that that day is gonna be great. So um, I, I did mess up one time uh, early on um, with only about 10 hours of solo time and I was pretty sure, I didn't guess the weather right and I was pretty sure I was headed to the scene of the crash. <laughs> and, uh, and that taught me a lot. Good. Well, I got to tell you, uh, congratulations on your pilot's Thank license. You. And it's kind of nice to be called a pilot, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. And, and I really, really appreciate your thoughts on aviation safety. I, I, I can tell you that we, we can all learn a lot from that. So fly safe and thanks for being on the program. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. We're going to do something a little bit special next time. Uh, some of you know that uh, angle of attack indicators is my new crusade, and I want to share with you why I think it's so important and what a great breakthrough it is. So please tune in next time, and we'll talk a little bit about angle of attack. Until then, fly safe. Thanks a lot, Harry. We'll be sure and check that out on Friday. That'll be the next edition of Hangar Flying. Today's sea ice edge, where is it? Well, a lot of it has melted away and been consolidated by a lot of movement from east to west. There is one strip of ice, and so several areas of higher concentrated ice that is rotting closer to the coast. As we understand it, that is affecting a little bit of uh, traffic into the ports there. So if you're having a little bit of trouble in seeing ice off the coast, that's probably what's going on here. If you're looking northward, there is considerable amounts of open water and sea ice free areas there all the way in the Chukchi Sea and the Beaufort Sea Coast, though, with the exception of that higher concentration of rotting ice. You can always get the latest ice edge there and an analysis there every day now at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice dot php. Here's a look at southeast weather now across the marine areas. You're looking at a southerly flow, pretty light on Tuesday in the north in the Lynn Canal, 10 knots with a two-foot sea. Northerlies coming through Frederick Sound and Stevens Passage, also looking for small seas. 15-knot winds from the south and east across the Clarence Strait and then across the coastal areas. A southerly flow around 10 to 15 knots with seas running around 7 to 8 feet in all areas. By Wednesday, that is picking up, though. As we've got our storm moving through the Gulf, you would expect a stronger flow working along the coastal areas, and that's exactly what we see. 15 to 20 knots on the inside with three to four foot seas from north to south and for coastal areas seas still running around seven feet from Craig to Sitka northward until you get into the northern Gulf and that starts uh, growing a little bit more to about nine feet outside of Yakutat with that southeasterly flow up to 30 knots. Now across south central areas by Tuesday night gales are expected across areas outside of Prince William Sound 25 knots on the inside 30 knots on the outside with 10 foot seas expected heading into the western Gulf 30 knot winds coming into the Barrens uh, with a nine foot sea southeasterlies into the Kodiak Island area. And then we have northeasterly winds across the northern Cook Inlet and then easterly winds as you get west of the Barrens. Northeasterly winds at 25 knots with an eight foot sea in Shellacoff Strait. By Wednesday, uh, we'll see some changes there as the frontal positions shifting around a little bit more. We're still holding on to a pretty steady southeasterly flow coming into the north and western Gulf. The winds inside Prince William Sound come up to 30 knots with a six foot sea. Northeasterlies move down Cook Inlet to about 25 knots, six foot seas there south of Kenai to Homer and Easterlies still going west of the Barrens at 25 knots and coming into Kodiak Island 15 to 20 knot winds there with nine foot seas 
on the eastern side of the island. For the Alaska Peninsula, easterlies inside of Bristol Bay at 25 knots with a 5-foot sea. Southerlies outside of Chignik and south of Kodiak Island with 8-foot seas there. That diminishes the further west you go and southeasterlies develop on the north side there of Cold Bay at 15 knots with a 5-foot sea. Even becoming light and variable by Wednesday. A big uh, change there with easterly flow inside of Bristol Bay. Winds are light uh, to about 15 knots as you head northward toward Chignik and Kodiak Island. 9-foot seas in the Pacific and 3-4-foot to four seas across the Bering. Looking at the Aleutians there, north and westerly flow coming through the central and western chain. Light winds north of Unalaska with a 7-foot sea. Compare that to 14-foot sea south of Adak and Atka for Tuesday. By Wednesday, northwesterly flow sweeps across the entire chain. 15 to 25 knots at its highest level there with 9-foot seas south of Adak and Atka. 5-foot seas north of Unalaska and Nikolsky. 9 to 10-foot seas on the south side and 7 to 8-foot seas in the west with 15 to 20 knot winds. Across the west coast, northeasterlies are moving through St. Lawrence Island. Easterlies are blowing offshore from Hooper Bay to Nunavak Island to uh, the Kuskokwim Delta. Northeasterlies across the Pribilofs at 20 knots with a 7-foot sea. Uh, expect about the same conditions there for the St. Matthew Island waters by Wednesday. More of a northerly shift there as low pressure is moving into the western gulf. We still have an easterly flow through the Kuskokwim Delta with a 4-foot sea expected there. 6-foot seas uh, south of St. Lawrence Island and 7-foot seas around the St. Matthew Island waters. The northerly flow should create 5-foot seas for the Pribilovs. East and northeasterly winds will be the rule for the Arctic coast on Tuesday. 6-foot seas for the Beaufort, uh, 5 to 8, even 10-foot seas there for the Chukchi Seacoast with the highest seas near Cape Lisburn and Point Hope with a 30-knot wind from the north and east. By Wednesday, we keep our easterly flow moving across the coast. Seas are still around 5, 6, even 7 feet there with northeasterlies diminishing a little bit for Cape Lisburn and Point Hope and northerlies inside of Kotzebue Sound at 20 knots with a 7-foot sea. Recapping tonight's weather, low pressure is shifting its focus from west and then moving that eastward as we go through the next few days. That'll keep rain chances focused mainly north of Sitka into the interior and around south central Alaska as that triple point moves into the western gulf. Some of the heavier rainfall crossing through Kodiak Island and south central coastal areas primarily. Showers and thunderstorms may be widely scattered initially across the lower and middle Yukon Valley and a better chance for those as we head into Wednesday with a northerly wind developing across the Bering Sea coast as we get into the midweek and heavy rain chances shifting eastward. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. See you tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.